Hi, and welcome back to Pisciple GUI 2020, Part 5, Shortcuts. I'm, uh, you might call, lazy programmer in some ways. I, I like compact code, clearly, um, and I would like to type as little as possible. I like uh, hotkeys. I already mentioned that I have a single key on my keyboard that runs program, runs whatever program is on the screen. And uh, one of the things I like about Python and built into Pisciple GUI is the ability to alias um, classes, functions, simple by using simple assignment. So you'll find all of the elements pretty much all of them have a shortened version. So text uh, has at least three versions. Input text has at least four. So you can write sg.text as you already know in your layouts. You can also write t. Uh, and I did this because it can cause your layouts to become m much smaller if you use the single letter ones in particular. And when you have a, a complex layout with a whole lot of elements, it's, it's nice when you can fit it all on a single line or on a single screen. It, it's just a, a great way to cut out the amount of code that you're reading and typing. And at some point, you you know that button is B. SD.B is the same as button. Or SG.T is text. And you don't need to type it out every time uh, as text. In particular for input, um, I, I don't I don't think I ever type input text. It's either input or or I. Uh, and the way these are done, if you look at the code, it's it is simple assignment, uh, and you can do that yourself as well. Um, l let's say instead of input text, you, you want to call it Fred. You can just say Fred is the same as sg input text and then you can say fred sub whatever and in there you'll notice if you do control p it has all the same parameters that your input text has and if it wasn't for a fact that there's a bug in pycharm if you did control q on it you would get the, the correct doc strings but there's a bug in PyCharm where it does not uh, carry forward these um, doc strings the way it should so um, you, you have to use the long format in order to get the full doc strings um, for classes like here, input text, you'll see all of the, the doc strings are there. If you did the shortened version, it simply shows that it does map to input text, but it doesn't give you the full uh, documentation from the doc strings. It, it will tell you the parameters if you do a control P, uh, but you lose all of the, the other documentation. In addition to shortened versions of the elements, there are um, shortened versions of calls as well. We'd already talked about previously that window.findElement uh, can be replaced with uh, brackets like a dictionary lookup. Um, window.findElement's the same as, as this kind of dictionary lookup. Let's pull up uh, some code here to look at. So here in this case, um, it would be window, so whatever the key is. 
right, is the same as window.findElement. Um, there is also two other shortcuts that you won't see very often. Um, and it, it's because they're a little bit confusing and it's hard to say whether or not there's much of a payoff. But you can call windows and you can call elements. And by that I mean um, instead of calling read, you can call the object. So this is the window object and I'm calling it here. I'm not calling SG window, I'm calling window. And that is the same as window.read. So if I run this program, um, uh, we get a warning from this other stuff up here. Let's get rid of this. If I run this program, you'll see that it displays a window and stuff just as if this was a, uh, a read call because it, it is. Uh, if you call an element, it's the same as calling update for that element. It, it's a little weird. At this point, I don't recommend using those two, but they're there. Um, another concept uh, that you'll see is what I call user-defined elements. Uh, one thing I wanted to, to mention about compression in general, in code compression. And th that is that it's a multi-pass activity, for me at least. When you see a piece of code of mine that is extremely short, chances are it did not start that way. You're, you're seeing the end result. Uh, it, it's a multi-pass thing. And so, sometimes it's three or four passes by the time it gets down to um, one or two lines of code instead of eight or ten lines of code. Um, so it, I, I suggest that you, you go back and look at your programs when, when you're at the kind of the polishing stage. Go through and do a pass and see if there are more efficient ways of writing um, rewriting the code if you should rewrite small portions of it. Okay, so user-defined elements. Uh, th th these are discussed in, I, I want to say, the cookbook as well as the main documentation. Let me show you an example of this. The uh, functions are uh, an Im important part of PySimple GUI. There are some buttons like submit that are functions and they look like um, they, they, they look like objects in terms of how they're spelled like uh, submit is a shortcut button. Right. So when I run this, you will see a submit button here. There are uh, OK is one, cancel is one. So you could say here sg.ok, sg.cancel. And it's just a way to, instead of writing out button and all that, of, of getting these uh, buttons uh, it, just by writing OK and cancel instead of writing out button. Those are, are documented. There's, there's a good long list of those that are available. So user-defined elements are functions that return elements. So let me put uh, together a full window layout here that takes uh, that takes your your name address and phone number so you will uh, first have some text that's like enter your name 
uh, and we want these to have labels that all line up and are right justified. So let's say the size is 12. We're going to justify to the right and let's say the font is courier uh, 14 and let's run this and see what that looks like okay so it looks sort of like that that's not too bad so if we repeat this and we have name address phone run that again and that that's nice and then let's add uh, an input here as well and we're going to need keys on these at some point but uh, just for testing purposes let's uh, let's just jot them down without keys and let let Pisipa GUI number them for you automatically so it, it looks sort of like this right it's not a bad looking little form we got going the the trouble i have with this is it's a little bit messy i mean there's there's just a lot here right um and i can shorten it by saying t but there's just a lot of parameters that are getting copied over and over again and um, we're going to do the same here with parameters on the input. Uh, let's say that we want these to be um, 20 characters each. And we're going to have a key. In this case, let's say the name. Right? And um, it will begin to get very wordy very quickly and your your layout just starts to to look bad it um it's just very wordy <laughs> and so uh, the solution to that is to use these things that i call user defined elements and all they are are functions that return elements so in this case let's let's call this thing um, let's just we'll call it data in and we'll name it as if it's an object and what we need when we're displaying a, so the idea is to try to make a row that looks like one of these so what changes uh, for these is the text that goes there right so we're going to need some text and then we need a key that goes with our input and so let's just copy this in fact paste this and we'll put our text there where the text goes and where the key is we're going to put our key and we'll just return this row and so now I can say data in and I'm going to say name right and a key like that and let's just run this and see what happens with it like this uh, it's got a duplicate key you'll notice because name got duplicated um, but it it looks the same this row and this one appear the same in our window so let's do let's do that for uh, address and phone and here we're going to say address and phone and we can delete these and 
when we run it, we have our nice name, address, and phone. Let's say I don't like the width of that. Let's make this 35 characters. And uh, you notice something right away there that I changed one spot and it changed all of these inputs for me. So, uh, and our layout is much nicer looking now instead of having all of these parameters uh, duplicated in the layout. Instead, I've got this user-defined element instead. And th this, this particular example, it goes sort of beyond an element. It, it's a, a full row, so in a way it's, it's more like a data row. Um, Shift F6 is your friend in PyCharm data row and I uh, do a refactor and uh, it fixes it right up. So that's what um, the term user defined elements when you see that that's what it's referring to. It's taking a PySimple GUI element or elements and returning them from a function so that you can use your function directly in your layout. And you'll see uh, more of this kind of thing uh, further along when we get into computed layouts where, or constructed layouts where we create layouts using uh, list comprehensions. So uh, that's it for this lesson. Uh, you've enjoyed it and uh, I urge you to use these rather than doing a bunch of copy and pastes.